two or three years ago, we did a study of uh, patients who come into the emergency department here at Royal Perth with an amphetamine-related presentation. And we developed this theory that some of these people uh, might have a silent abnormality in the brain that neither they nor the doctors looking after them um, are aware of. We did this study, an MRI brain study, to look for any abnormalities that may or may not be present. Before we started out, we said to ourselves, if we found 10% had an abnormality, we would have thought that was pretty impressive. 23 of the 30 are what we'd call serious users. And then there were seven people who were recreational users. And of those 23 people, five had an abnormality in the brain that um, nobody suspected. And our result was basically 20%. So it was actually much higher than what we thought. The most common abnormality we found is a little spots on the brain called unidentified bright objects. So you can see here there's this little bright area in the, in the frontal lobe of the brain. While we know that drugs like amphetamines cause constriction or narrowing of blood vessels, so the blood vessels that big, it narrows down, the blood with oxygen isn't really getting through. And so the brain cells that are around these small blood vessels die off and form scar tissue. That's probably what those UBOs are, are is an area of scar, scarring of brain tissue. We do know that as you get older, you're more likely to have these UBOs. Once you're in your 80s, over 90% of people have UBOs. Once you're in your 60s, about 20% of people have UBOs. But at the age of 30, less than 1%, 0.5% of people should have a UBO. The average age of the people in our study was 27 years. So these are young, young people. People who have these UBOs as they get older are much more likely to suffer problems with the cognitive function of the brain, stroke, uh, dementia and death. People would have seen those public health pictures of um, somebody before and after using methamphetamine and, and it clearly shows that they're ageing on the outside. But we're forming the view that not only uh, is it ageing you on the outside, it's ageing you on the inside. You might have an um, elderly grandparent who's fine and they're living and eating and breathing and talking and doing things, but when you talk to them they're a bit vague, they're a bit forgetful, they're not as sharp as they used to be. It'd be the same kind of thing, but obviously at a much younger age. 